Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching Ikins vs. the Sponge on my new favorite map, Onyx Cauldron. Actually, not really new favorite map because it's been around for a little while, but definitely an awesome map. I mean, it's, just, it's so pretty. I mean, just look at it. Admittedly, it's kind of rainy, but it's got such a nice skybox and it's, it's cool setup and great use of terrain, great use of the specular maps. And this nice little terracing. Well, it's not so much terracing, but looks like basalt formations along the side. That's just so cool. But anyway, back to the game. So Ikin's starting on the north, the southeast corner of the map going for shields, while the sponge starting on the south, no, northwest corner of the map going for vehicles. And on this map, despite its size, vehicles are actually rather difficult to use well. We'll see how the sponge manages with them, but it's kind of tricky because the thing is vehicles cannot easily go along the sides of the base. They can't go up this walls here. They can kind of, I think they can go along the sides here. Just double check his pathing. Yeah, it can slowly go along the sides here, but it's really kind of tricky. It cannot go along the walls, but bots can. Shield bots actually, well, both bots, both shield bots and cloaky bots and jump bots, and of course spider bots, can go, and amphibious. There are a lot of bot factories in this game, but the main two, spiders and cloaky, sorry, <laughs> shields and cloakies, spiders are not a main bot factory as much as I love them. They are not a main factory, they are simply a secondary factory, well, they're a factory that's kind of tricky to use. So, it's one to be used with caution on maps where it works out well. But, shields and cloakies, those are the main two, and they can easily go along the sides here. It's very difficult for a vehicle player to set up nice defenses. Now, levelers are a good first choice on this map, given that bots are to be expected. And the sponge, how did that leveler not see those bandits? Akin's just avoiding them. I think the bandits might have been able to see that, but there we go. Now we're starting out a fight, and the leveler taking on the bandits without much issue. Although one of the bandits is able to survive, and the sponge not going back, still marching forward with his levelers. Now, levelers and bandits actually have about the same move speed, so I'm a little bit surprised that that the sponge went for vehicles in the first place. I mean, if you're going to go for vehicles on a map because it's large, then go for something like darts or scorchers at first, at least, just to... Okay, I say that knowing that levelers are a good choice, being that bots are a common choice on Onyx Cauldron, but still... Scorchers will take, and darts will take advantage of the speed. Take advantage of the fact that this map is just shorter for them, ultimately. But no, the sponge focusing more on using levelers primarily. I'm a little bit surprised he did decide to go for light vehicles. But that's what he chose, so we'll see what he does with that. Now, on the other hand, very quickly, Akins is switching over to rogues and outlaws. A good choice. Outlaws will be able to slow down the levelers, stopping them from attacking too frequently, while the rogues can deal with them outside of the levelers' range. And the rogues are going out to attack. They're going in fight mode up against these levelers. As mentioned in the last tutorial video, that this blue arrow means fight mode, so they'll automatically micromanage around rather than having to manually control them. It's kind of handy. It can be useful for keeping them alive, especially for skirmishers. Great tool to use. But anyway, the rogues are starting up. They are getting some shots into the levelers, slowing the levelers down, but not actually hurting them, just forcing them to weave and dodge so they avoid any problems. And this is the sponge. Actually, nice manual microfire the sponge. He is he's the one doing the weaving and dodging. Well, Ikins is just letting his rogues take care of staying out of the way. While the outlaws are... While the outlaw not quite in range yet. It should be close. Now, thugs are what he's going for. Thugs and outlaws are the typical mix. The thugs will stop the levelers from dealing too much damage. The leveler splash will still hit the thug through the shields, I think. Yeah, it still damages it through the shield. The splash gets it. But that's still protecting the outlaw, which can now slow down the levelers, keep them in laser range, and that should finish them off. Once the rogues get in, they will be able to finish off that leveler, and that is that for those first two levelers. The sponge has two more levelers coming in, and more being built. Looks like he's switching over. No, he's not switching over to anything. He's staying with levelers the entire time. Not switching to ravagers or anything like that. He is sticking with his levelers. Now against rogues... Man, this is a tough choice. I would probably go with some Scorchers. I can understand why he wants to go for Levelers, because Levelers are great for dealing with fast-moving units. But for dealing with slow-moving units that have very long range, but very slow-moving projectiles, fast units are what you want. Something like Scorchers. Possibly Darts, though I'm not sure if Darts would be cost-effective in this case. But Scorchers would be a good idea. And no, instead it is in fact going for Ravagers after... He's getting another worker and then getting Ravagers after that. Switching to level leveler Ravager mix. And at this point, there really aren't enough levelers. If he were to flank around with the levelers, he could work. But I think... Let's see, Akins has radar. He just... Okay, the sponge has just left Akins' radar. And 
Akins looks like he's being a little bit hesitant to get out of his radar range. Not knowing what exactly is going to be going on outside of there. The Sponge probably going to try to set up a flank here. No one's using this side of the map, by the way. No one's using the southwest and sending any units in. Nothing from there. I don't think the Sponge is aware of where Akins' radar is. Now, Sponge's own radar is not too far outside of his own base, so both players are pretty much playing defensive radar. Neither of them has radar in the center of the map, so neither of them really knows what the opponent is up to. And they're setting up a no-man's land nearer to Akins' base than the Sponge's. And Akins continuing along with Thug and... Thug and Rogue. No outlaws, just Thug Rogue. While he is now going towards the southwest side of the map, and at the same time, the Sponge also starting to take the southwest side of the map. The Sponge has an economic advantage, and going for gunships... Well, interesting choice. I can definitely understand why he's doing that. Because at this point, any money diverted to Vandals would actually be kind of lost. If you think about it, because there's a lot of vehicles... The light vehicles are best handled by the rogues. Or sorry, the levelers are best handled by the rogues. And if money was diverted into Vandals, it could be a problem. Though it looks like the Vandals have been started to be built anyway. There is awareness of the gunships coming in. And that's probably just metagame sense. I don't think that Ikins actually had any scouting going on of the gunship plan. He's probably just aware this is about the time in the game where gunships would start to come up. And as a result, he's decided to start building gunships, or start building anti-air, building some vandals. And the thing is, at this point, I think Akins can actually afford that. He's he's destroyed enough of the Sponge's vehicles without losing any of his own units, or losing a few enough of his own units, that it's going to be pretty big. I mean, even if he has the vandals, it's, his army is so big that it doesn't even matter. He can actually afford to spend some money on them. And it looks like the Ravagers are forcing back the rogues, but still the rogues are able to... No, not quite. The Raptors dodging nicely, dealing a bit of damage to one of the rogues. Or no, not quite dealing damage to one of the rogues. But still, the Raptor going down. The Sponge is not able to get any advantage on this. And here comes some Banshee. So this is going to be somewhat useful. Banshees will be able to come in. They will be able to deal with the rogues just fine. Now, of course, Vandals, like I said, have been built, or were being built. They were planned to be built. I'll have to look for them. Not sure exactly where they were placed. Looks like... Ah, here they are. They're placed along the north side of the map. And I don't think the Banshee's going to come along there. Probably just going to come along the center to try to deal with this. Try to get some position advantage. The Vandals are scouting around, trying to figure out what's going on, where the metal extractors are. And I don't see... Oh, where is it? Banshee is... Ha okay, one of the Banshees... Two Banshees have been built. Another Banshee on the way. These Banshees are being built fairly quickly. But still, Ikins is pushing in... Powerfully, he has a couple Vandals, and the Sponge now is fully aware of these Vandals. He knows they are coming, he knows he has to deal with them, and these Banshees will not do with that. And the Sponge starting to get rid of Akins' commander, however, the Sponge going for has an upgraded commander against a Commander Junior. Interesting choice for Akins. Commander Junior is what you have when you first start the game. If you don't have any unlocks, you have Commander Junior, which is a pretty decent strike commander with a beam laser right off the bat. No upgrades required or available. Whereas... Your base commander that's unupgraded is slightly weaker, and from the looks of it, both commanders going down simultaneously. This is an entirely commanderless match from this point on. The Sponge, however, is looking at a very powerful attack coming in from Ekins, and Ekins has definitely taken more map control. He has a slightly stronger economy, though both of them are about even at this point. But Ekins has a much stronger military, and this is the big difference. If the Banshees can get rid of Akins' military, this is probably going to make all the difference. And the Thugs are definitely going down. However, the Levelers and Ravagers... No, actually, they're not being micro poorly. They are getting in. They're taking a bit of damage, but not very much at all. And the Banshees are able to get rid of the Rogues. All these Rogues going down. This is not good at all for Akins. Losing his entire army and his Vandals were totally out of position to the north. Though even then, two Vandals wouldn't be that big. Building a bunch of Vandals now... He's got about six of them, but well, four of them in his base, two of them up north. But even then, that is not a whole lot. So the Sponge, he's placed himself in a good position for a comeback. Now these Vandals are going to be something to get through. The Banshees, they're going to have to get through those, and that's not going to be easy. And the thing is, the Banshees, enough of them will be able to deal with a few Vandals. But at this point, the biggest thing that needs to be done is a powerful ground force. And at this point, the Vandals are actually everything that exists. There's a, an outlaw and a thug, but other than that, everything is Vandals. That's all that Akins is producing right now is Vandals, trying to make sure the Banshees can't get any 
leeway in here, but the Ravagers and Levelers are still being built, and I still think Scorchers would be a good idea. Just a half dozen Scorchers at most. Just send them around for some of the lighter things. I mean, Rogues aren't being built right now, but they soon will be, I'm sure. Switch back to them. And especially getting rid of the Vandals easily. The Vandals can move away from the Ravagers and Levelers without too much issue. But not from the Scorchers. See, the Ravagers is such a slow projectile that the Vandals basically don't have to worry about it. I mean, one of them did get caught out, but that took a lot of shots for it to get caught out and be completely destroyed. So there's not a whole lot that can go for that. The Levelers have a better chance, being that their projectile is faster. But both units are quite slow. They're barely catching up to the Vandals, and now their main strength, however, is the base assault. They are going to be able to get rid of this laser tower, not losing any of their number, and able to get rid of this metal extractor too if they so choose. One of them going for it. And Bandit's coming in to try to deal with the Ravagers. Should probably not be able to deal with them. One of them, the weakened one might go down. Now Roach, this is where we're going to look at. This Roach taking out more of its own side than the enemy, actually. Taking out two Bandits and a Leveler. Still, not bad taking out the Leveler, but those Bandits really probably would have been better off alive than dead. As a general rule, killing your own units is unwise. I mean, roaches are designed to die, but I mean, having collateral damage of other units of your own is generally a bad idea. Now that was the, just the sponge, his levelers hitting nicely and hitting effectively. Now at the same time, on the north side of the map, the sponge is trying to attack to the north. He doesn't have his defenses in position in the way of Ikin's defenses, but he's also attacking to the south. The Banshees, about two dozen Banshees here. Holy crap, that's a lot of Banshees. Oh, 16, sorry. But still, a lot of Banshees coming in and dealing a lot of damage. The Vandals are going down. Another Roach taken out. Actually, quite a few vehicles that time. But the Ravagers taking care of all of the Vandals. This Razor's Kiss is about the only thing available. One more Roach, but that's basically nothing new at this point. And a few more Roaches are coming in to finish off the Ravagers. But neither of them wants to get out of position. Neither of them wants to get in a position where they're going to get hit. Because if it changes, that's going to destroy Ikins' entire base. Ikins might actually leave his base open for destruction. And Fusion Reactor going down for Ikins. Blowing up most of his base by killing the Roaches... And the last Roach goes down. I think Akin's dealt more damage to himself than he did to the Sponge's forces at this point. Although, i got to say, I'm a bit surprised he built that fusion plant. And it looks like he has another, actually, on the map. Yeah, given the amount of energy he has. But at this point, the Banshees are coming in to finish it off. I think... I don't know where he has a fusion plant. He must have another one. Oh, sorry, that's the Sponge. The Sponge is a fusion plant, not... No, he doesn't have a fusion plant. He's a bunch of wind generators. A much safer option than a fusion plant that just blows up in the middle of your base. Destroying everything. I think Akins has lost this game. As a note, I, you never see players play, building a fusion reactor in the middle of their base. This is very new. But anyway, that's the game. The Sponge making a nice comeback after losing those forces early on. Yeah, that Vandal. If those Vandals had been in position, that would have made all the difference. But unfortunately for Akins, they were not. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I think I'll have time for another. Just to double check what time it is and how long the next game is going to be. Yeah, I have time for another. Okay, so I'll be back shortly. Stay tuned, everyone.